Welcome to Pratham Science Academy classes and in this video we are going to start chapter 2 uh, polynomials of class 10 and this is the introductory part wherein we are going to recall what we have studied in class 9th and <clears throat> we know that uh, we represent a polynomial let's say the polynomial of variable x is represented by p of x and <clears throat> let's take an example where our polynomial is 4x plus 2. Now the highest power of x in this polynomial is 1 so we say that degree of this polynomial is 1 so degree is the highest power of x so highest power of variable x in part so the highest power of variable in a polynomial is called its degree and this is a polynomial of variable x so degree of this polynomial is 1 similarly if we have polynomial of variable x let's say we have this polynomial 2y square minus 3 by plus 4 so here the highest so this is a polynomial of variable y and the highest power of y in this polynomial is 2 so we say that degree of this polynomial is 2 and <clears throat> if we have say another polynomial wherein the polynomial of variable x so this is equal to 5x cubed minus x square plus 2x plus root 2. This is another polynomial and here the highest power of variable in this polynomial is 3. So we say that degree of this polynomial is 3. Now <clears throat> the polynomial with degree 3 is called linear polynomial. So we are just trying to recall what we have studied in class 9 and the polynomial of variable uh, with variable and degree 2 is called quadratic polynomial so polynomial with degree 2 is called quadratic polynomial and polynomial with degree 3 we call this polynomial as cubic polynomial. So, highest power of a variable in a polynomial is called its degree. And polynomial with degree 1 is called linear polynomial. Polynomial with degree 2 is called quadratic polynomial. And polynomial with degree 3 is called cubic polynomial. So now let's see what are the zeros of the polynomial and so we call this the zeros or the root of a polynomial or the solution of a polynomial and we have already studied in class 9 that if we have this quadratic uh, let's say the linear polynomial 2x plus 3 so this is our polynomial so the value of x which makes the value of the polynomial 0 is what we call the zero of the polynomial so in this case if i find the value of the polynomial at x so if i find the value of the polynomial at x is equal to minus 3 by 2 so if i substitute the value of x is equal to minus 3 by 2 so this gives me minus 3 by 2 plus 3 so this is minus 3 plus 3 is equal to 0 so at x is equal to minus 3 by 2 the value of this polynomial becomes 0 so we say that minus 3 by 2 is uh, the 0 of 
p of x is equal to 2x plus 3. So this is how we find the zero of a linear polynomial and to find the zero of the polynomial we can simply assign the value to zero for the polynomial and p of x is 2x plus 3 so 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 will give us the value of x is equal to minus 3 by 2 and x is equal to minus 3 by 2 will be the 0 of p of x. We also call it root or the solution of a polynomial and because this polynomial has degree 1, so degree 1 means that we will have 1 0 for this linear polynomial and similarly for the quadratic polynomial we will have 2 0 so let's consider this quadratic polynomial x square minus 3x minus 4 so let's say our quadratic polynomial is x square minus 3x plus 4 now the degree here is 2 so we will have 2 zeros for this polynomial so degree is equal to 2 so we will have 2 zeros that is the two values of x for which the value of this polynomial will be 0 and because so this is a quadratic polynomial and to find zero we will try to factorize this quadratic polynomial using splitting the middle term so i can write this polynomial x square minus 3x so i can write it as x square so by splitting the middle term it's minus 4x plus x plus 4 and let me make this negative so this is x square minus 3x minus 4 and this is x square minus 4x minus 4 so i have spread the middle term of this polynomial and let's take the common factor for the first two terms is x so this gives me x minus 4 and for at least the common is 1 so this is x minus 4 so x minus 4 into x plus 1 are the factors of this quadratic polynomial and if i assign x minus 4 is equal to 0 that gives me x is equal to 4 so where x is equal to 4 and if i put x plus 1 is equal to 0 which gives me x is equal to minus 1 so x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 4 these are the zeros of the quadratic problem so degree is 2 so we will have two zeros and if the degree is 3 for the three polynomial, we will have three zeros and it goes on like this. So in this chapter, we are going to deal mainly with the quadratic polynomial. And let's consider this polynomial once again. So our polynomial was P of X is equal to X squared minus 3X minus 4. Now, the coefficient of x square here we are going to denote this by a which is one coefficient of x is b which is negative three and the constant is c negative four and here our two zeros are x is equal to four and x is equal to minus one so we usually denote these zeros by alpha and beta for the quadratic part let's say alpha is equal to four and beta is equal to negative one now there is a relationship between the the relationship says that the sum of the zeros is equal to negative of coefficient of x upon the coefficient of x square which is a so let's put in the values and see if the relation is verified or not so uh, our zeros are alpha and beta alpha is 4 beta is negative 1 negative b is negative 3 a is 1 so which gives us 3 is equal to 3 and hence this relation is verified which says that sum of the zeros of the quadratic polynomial is equal to negative b by a where b is the coefficient of x and a is 
the quotient of the term containing x square. Next relationship is the product of zeros which says should be equal to constant by the quotient of x square which is a. Now let's try to verify this which is alpha beta is equal to c by a alpha is 4 and beta is negative 1 c. So c here is constant negative 4 by 1 so this is negative 4 by 1 so negative 4 is equal to negative 4 which is true. So hence we have verified the relationship. So we have to remember this that the product of zeros of the quadratic polynomial is c by a and the sum of the zeros for the quadratic polynomial is negative b by a. Okay, so this is regarding the quadratic polynomial, how to find the zeros and how to verify the relationship between the coefficients of x, coefficient of x square and the constant. Okay, our next topic is to uh, find what is the geometrical meaning of the zeros of a polynomial. Okay, we are uh, in this video, we are going to see what is the geometrical meaning of the zeros of a polynomial. And to understand this, let's consider, uh, let's say, the polynomial. We have this polynomial y is equal to 2x plus 3. Now, the zeros of a polynomial means the value of x for which the value of y is 0. And if I try to sketch the graph for this, that is to, let's, if I put x is equal to 0, that gives me y is equal to 3. And if I put y is equal to 0, so in this equation, if I put y is equal to 0, so that will give me the value of x will be minus 3 by 2. So this is minus 3 by 2. Now, if I plot the graph for this polynomial or this linear equation. So let's say this is uh, y axis and this is our x axis. Okay. So this is the positive side of x axis. And this is the negative side of x axis. This is Okay, we also know how to find the zero of a given polynomial. So to find the zero of the given polynomial, we assign it the value zero. So that is 2x plus 3 is equal to zero. And this will give us the zero of the polynomial, which is x is equal to minus 3 by 2. And this is the value of x where the value of y is zero. So this point lies on, this is minus 3 by 2, which is minus 1.5 so minus 1.5 should be some way here and the next is 0 comma 3 should be here and if i join this if i sketch the graph for y is equal to 2x plus 3 so this is the graph for y is equal to 2x plus 3 now this is minus 3 by 2 comma 0 this point and this is 0 comma 3 and we know that the zero of the polynomial is the value of x for which the value of y is zero. So this is our zero uh, on this in this Cartesian plane. So that means the geometrical meaning of the zeros of the polynomial means 
the graph of the polynomial if we draw the graph of the polynomial and it intersects the x-axis so it intersects the x-axis here so this is the zero of the polynomial for which the value of y is zero so the value of x for which the value of y is zero of the polynomial and the number of zeros will be the number of times the graph that intersects the x-axis so in this case there is only one zero which is x is equal to minus three by two because this graph intersects the x-axis only one time okay <laughs> now let's move on to the quadratic polynomial we know that the quadratic polynomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c and graph of this quadratic polynomial will be of the form parabola and if a is greater than zero then the graph will be in this form that is it will open upwards towards the positive y-axis and now this intersects the x-axis at two points so that means this has two zeros so number of times the graph intersects the x-axis will give us the number of the zeros and make sure that we have to ignore it uh, the intersection point at the y-axis so we will just consider only the intersection points at the x-axis so if a is greater than zero then the graph will be like this and if a is less than zero that is if a is negative then graph will be somewhat in the downward direction like this and in this case we will once again have two zeros and suppose for a quadratic for any polynomial let's say the graph is for any polynomial let's say f of x is equal to let's say a x raised power 4 plus b x cube plus c x square plus d x plus c now the graph of the polynomial is like this so it intersects the y-axis at one, two, three, and four points. So this will have four zeros. So that is the geometrical concept of the zeros of the polynomial for linear polynomial to intersect the x-axis only at one point. So this will have only one zero, like in this case. And for the quadratic polynomial, this will we will get the graph in the form of the parabola which will intersect the x-axis at two points so we will have two zeros and depending upon the degree we will get this graph will intersects the x-axis at four points so this will have four zeros so that is the geometrical concept of the zeros of the polynomial that is the value of the x for the value of y is zero and the value of the x for the value of y is zero we will get only these points only on the x-axis so we will only consider the point of intersection of the curve and the x-axis to get the number of zeros and now let's move on to the next topic which is the relation between the coefficients <coughs> so the next topic is to establish the relationship between the zeros of the polynomial and the coefficient of x and the coefficient of x square and the constant c. So, <clears throat> so this is the relationship between zeros and the coefficients of a polynomial. So, Our next topic is relationship between <clears throat> zeros and coefficients of the polynomial. And in this case, we are going to deal specifically with the quadratic polynomial. So we know that the quadratic polynomial is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And <clears throat> we will get p values of x in this case. 
and for the sake of convenience i will consider one as alpha and the other as alpha other as beta so now the relationship between zeros or uh, and coefficients of the quadratic polynomial of is that the sum of the zeros is equal to minus b by a and the product of the zeros is equal to c by a so this is a relationship between zeros and the coefficients of a quadratic polynomial and let's try to get this solved by considering an example so let me take this example let's say our quadratic polynomial is 2x squared minus 8x plus 6 so 2x squared minus 8x plus 6 so i'm going to write down the coefficients of the polynomials that is x squared is a i denote it by a the coefficient of x squared is a which is 2 coefficient of x is minus b which is minus 8 and the constant is c now let's try to get uh, the zeros first so how do we get the zeros we multiply the a with the constant which is 2 into 6 is equal to 12 now let's get the factors of 12 and so that their product is 12 and their sum or difference is negative 8 and such two factors are minus 6 and minus 2 so minus 6 into minus 2 is 12 and minus 6 minus 2 is negative 8 so instead of negative 8x i'm going to write so this is 2x squared negative 8x is uh, i can write it as this is minus 6x minus 2x plus 6 okay so for these two terms the common is 2x so this is x minus 3 minus 2 into x minus 3 and x minus 3 is common so 2x minus 2 so if i put x minus 3 is equal to this this gives me x is equal to 3 so x is equal to 3 this is our first zero and 2x minus 2 is equal to 0 so 2x is equal to 2 which gives me x is equal to 1 so x is equal to 1 is another zero and I am going to denote this the two zeros by alpha and beta. Now to establish the relation, we have to verify that alpha sum of the zeros is equal to negative b by a. Let's put in the respective values. Alpha is three, beta is one, negative, and b is negative eight. A is two. So here I would like to mention that this negative is of the formula and the value of b is negative a so this is negative of negative 8 most of the guys they make mistake here by just putting in the negative 8 and they won't get it verified for the sum of the zeros so this is negative negative is plus so this is 8 by 2 which is equal to 4 so 4 is equal to 4 the first relationship is verified and second is the product of zero that is equal to c by a alpha is three beta is one c is six and a is so this is three is equal to three so the sum of the zeros is equal to c by a and product of zero is equal to minus b by a hence we have verified the relationship between the coefficients and the zeros or we can say hence the relationship is unverified okay that's all about the polynomials in this chapter and now let's move on to the respective exercises, exercise 2.1 and 2.2 to solve the questions.